Argentina and Guatemala set the details ahead of primary and general elections, respectively. The South American nation reviews the electoral roll, while candidates intensified campaigning in Guatemala. The Russian Defense Ministry confirmed that its troops advanced three kilometers on the Kupiansk front in northeastern Ukraine in the past three days. And Niger remains under threat of military intervention following a warning from the directive of the Economic Community of West African States. Hello from the headquarters of Telesur English in Havana, Cuba. This is from the South. I'm your anchor Gladys Quesada and these are the news. The Prime Minister of Jamaica, Andrew Holness, has confirmed that he will deploy troops to Haiti. The community of Caribbean states, CARICOM, has expressed its support for the decision. Kingston assures that the decision to be part of a multinational force pretends to alleviate the deteriorating security conditions. The Premier explained that after analyzing all the scenarios, it became evident that Haiti required more than their indirect help. Thus, the Caribbean nation will send a contingent of no more than a thousand troops that will be under Kenya's command. CARICOM also welcomed the decision of the Bahamas to join the efforts, although it has not yet specified how it will express its support. On early Monday morning, Dominican Republic's authorities report the death of 13 Haitian asylum seekers in Valverde province when the vehicle in which they were traveling slid and fell into an irrigation canal. According to the preliminary reports, there were two minors amongst the fatalities and two survivors have been transferred to a regional hospital center. The local prosecutor's office has assumed the investigation from which it has only turned out that the Haitian citizens could have been irregular asylum seekers. The Dominican government has established strict immigration controls against the neighboring nation, which forces hundreds of Haitians who maintain family, commercial and even health ties with the Dominican Republic to choose increasingly insecure roads for crossing the border. We have already started an investigation in order to find the responsible of this tragedy. And in the next few hours, we will be giving more information because the investigation has just begun. As you know, there are 13 fatalities, very regrettable, and the Kemanti Haitian nationals. A vehicle which was transporting them apparently in unclear conditions lying to the risky channel. And unfortunately, this is the result. At least seven Mexican police officers were kidnapped on Sunday when a group of armed men broke into the Villa Hidalgo Municipality Command in the state of Zacatecas, Mexico. Through a statement, the state's Commission for Peace reported that the whereabouts of the police officers are still unknown. The text indicated that the elements of the Mexican Army, the National Guard, and the Zacatecas Immediate Reaction Force of the state police have been deployed in the area to try to find the kidnapped police officers and those responsible. Following the attack, the state police have taken control of the Villa Hidalgo Police Agency. Authorities also reported that during the search operation, they used aerial drones as part of the security actions. On Sunday, authorities in Honduras notified that the nation has not registered homicides during seven months in 76 of its 298 municipalities as a result of the governmental strategies developed to face criminality. According to the report presented by the police statistical system, the figure represents 25.5 percent of the total number of municipalities. For the same period last year, the figure of zero occurrence was only achieved in 58 municipalities. The South the director of the GAN police, Eduardo Lanza, also informed that in 12 months they have captured more than 2,000 people linked to criminal structures. Legislators of the Liberty and Refoundation Party are processing in the parliament a series of law projects that will boost the fight against criminal violence.
Now we move on to other topics. The National Electoral Chamber of Argentina has confirmed a rise in the electoral roll as almost 2 million 16 and 17 years old are now eligible to vote this Sunday in the primary elections. A 2012 amendment to the citizenship law allows Argentines to vote from the age of 16. As a result, 1,168,033 young people will be able to do so in the open, simultaneous and mandatory primary elections and known by its acronym as PASO. However, the Secretary of Electoral Action Sebastián Schimmel clarifies that from this total, 3,213 young people are subtracted because they are abroad. Schimmel also gave an account on the organization of the electoral centers for this Sunday's polls. There are 204,300 polling stations nationwide. There is a natural growth to the population growth. To this amount, we have to add 385 polling stations that are set up in the detention units. So we are close to 105,000 polling stations in our 24 districts, a very important territorial station and world. In the case of Santa Fe, we have a very significant money too. It is the third district in electoral capacity at national level. So this is reflected in the number of polling stations, number of readers, and number of polling station authorities. And the leaders of the formulas fighting for the presidency of Guatemala increased their proselytizing activity less than 15 days before the polls on August the 20th. While they wait the decisions of the judicial bodies, Bernardo Arevalo, the candidate of the Semilla movement, and Sandra Torres, candidate of the National Unity for Hope, are running their campaigns throughout the nation. There, they have tried to convince this weekend millions of citizens overwhelmed by the serious crisis the country is going through. The campaign the campaign will end on Friday 18th, 36 hours before the electoral process. In the department of Escuintla, in the central south of the country, Arevalo promised to fight corruption. Ten days from today, we are going to say no to this state of corruption to start a new chapter. The new chapter of a country that respects itself by voting for respect of our people of a country that believes in itself and believes in its ability to build a decent, transparent, harmonious and peaceful future where welfare is built little by little with effort but will reach everyone and everywhere and not this chapter where we live now. For her part, Sandra Torres, candidate of the National Union for Hope, called in the metropolitan area of the Department of Guatemala to go to the polls on August 20th as the only way to guarantee social peace. I come today to ask you to continue to support me and to go out and vote next August 20, 15 days to return peace and tranquility to our people. Today, as a political party, we have left aside the political antennas and the color of our parties to work for you to achieve unity for our country and to achieve tranquility and social peace that we all want and dream of. Let's take a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok at Tell Us With English, where you will be finding news in different formats, news updates and more. Other stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back. On Monday, the Russian Defense Ministry confirmed that its troops advanced three kilometers on the Kupiansk front in northeastern Ukraine in the past three days. The city of Kupiansk and its surroundings in Ukraine's Kharkiv region were under the command of the Ukrainian forces since last September, but Moscow was sure to recover control of the region, as confirmed by the Moscow Defense Ministry, which also said that in the last three days the advance of the Russian troops has been 11 kilometers along the front and more than three kilometers deep into the enemy defense. On the other hand, also the Russian authorities reported that their forces carried out several waves of attacks against Ukraine on Monday night while Kiev attacked bridges on its Russian territories on Sunday.
Now we'll address other topics. According to UNICEF report, children living in South Asia are exposed to temperatures above 35 degrees Celsius for long hours. The United Nations Children's Agency children in, said that children in countries such as Afghanistan, India, Sri Lanka and Pakistan, among others, are exposed to scorching heat. They are the most affected in the world by this phenomenon, not only in intensity, but also in time, as they face more than four heat waves every year. The agency recalled that Kakobabad, a Pakistani city, recorded the highest temperature on the planet when it reached 51 degrees Celsius. They explained that children's anatomies cannot adapt quickly to changes in temperature. At least three people have been injured while several hundred had to be evacuated due to the fire that is raging on the island of Sardinia in Italy. Local authorities explained that the fire originated in the morning hours in the area of Monte Longu and spread rapidly towards the locality of Siniscola and La Caleta. The areas of greatest risk were evacuated. The flames, which have caused significant material losses, are fanned by weather conditions that bring strong gusts of wind. The regional authorities are investigating the origin of the fires and are already announcing legal proceedings. The fire caused minor injuries to two residents hit by the explosions of gas cylinders in their homes, while some 600 people were evacuated between the towns of Montelongo and San Giovanni, and at least two highways were partially closed. And in Portugal, people bid farewell to Pope Francis in mass. During his visit to the Lusitanian nation, the pontiff insisted that abuses by the Catholic hierarchy will not be tolerated. Pope Francis reiterated zero tolerance in the face of tremendous plague of cases of abuse by members of the church that the press conference and or at the press conference on board in which the plane he was returning from his trip to Lisbon, where he took part in the World Youth Day. Francis responded at a press conference in cases of abuse in Portugal, where a recent report revealed that in 70 years there were up to 4,800 cases of minors abused by members of the church. The Pope also affirmed that the Catholic Church is open to everyone, including the LGBTQI community, and that it has a duty to accompany them on a personal path of spirituality, but within the framework of its rules. In the Gaza Strip, strong protests have followed the killing of four Palestinian youths in the West Bank by Israeli soldiers. Social organizations in the Gaza Strip strongly denounce this incident, which is interpreted as an Israeli escalation at a tense moment in the West Bank. The aggression was confirmed by the Palestinian Ministry of Health, which also denounced that occupation forces prevented ambulances from reaching the scene. The spokesperson for the Hamas resistance movement denounced that the Israeli occupying soldiers continued to commit new crimes by killing civilians in Jenin, seeking to perpetuate the ongoing terror against the Palestinian people. On Monday, four Syrian Arab army soldiers were killed and other four were wounded as Syrian air defenses engaged in repelling an airstrike by the Israeli forces in the occupied Syrian in the vicinity of the capital Damascus. Such acts of aggression have become commonplace in Syria, with the Israeli occupation continuously violating the country's airspace. Monday's attack was the third one this month. Prior, major missile attacks were reported on July 19th. Also nearby Damascus, and another one July the 2nd, targeting some points in the vicinity of the city of Homs. In every case, the Syrian air defense systems have quickly intercepted the aggression. Those airstrikes have also damaged infrastructure. Tell us for English launches its own videos on demand site for you to go and revisit our interviews, the top stories, the special broadcastings and more. Just go to the top left corner in our website homepage and click on the video option to access our VOD platform. And now we will have a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. 
In Pakistan, on Monday, supporters of former Prime Minister Imran Khan staged a protest in Lahore as Khan's lawyers attempted to file a petition that will allow them to challenge his three-year sentence on corruption charges. Khan's lawyers have been denied access to their client at Atak Jail, a 100-year-old prison on the outskirts of historical Atak City, about 40 miles west of the capital Islamabad. Khan's lawyers are trying to get power of attorney on behalf of their client in order to be able to appeal the sentence which disqualifies him from running for office for the next five years. Khan's lawyers are also requesting that the former prime minister be transferred to a cell with better living conditions. Khan was sentenced in absentia at a Saturday hearing on corruption charges relating to gifts received as prime minister. Khan's prior three-day arrest last May in relation to this same case spark deadly clashes with police when tens of thousands of his supporters took the The lawyers are protesting peacefully here in front of the Lahore High Court against the verdict that was handed down before yesterday, in which Imran Khan was illegally and unlawfully handed three years imprisonment and disqualified from election for five years. Niger remains under threat of military intervention on Monday following a warning from the Directive of the Economic Community of West African States. After the expiration of the deadline given to the National Safeguards Council of the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, the Council closed the airspace, mobilized the troops to the borders of the host countries, and warned of a joint response. However, the military intervention agreed to on Friday in the Nigerian capital by the Western Bloc High Command did not take place. ECOWAS reported on Monday that it is preparing a statement with the next steps and does not rule out a new visit to Niamey. In view of the threat of intervention from a neighboring country, Niger's airspace is closed to all aircraft from today, Sunday 6 August 2023, until further notice. Any attempt to violate national airspace will be met with an energetic and instantaneous response, signed in Niamey on 6 August 2023 by the President of the National Council for the Safeguard of the Homeland. On Monday, Mali and Burkina Faso announced that they are sending a Solidarity Joint official delegation to Niger, the scene of a military coup late July. The delegation will be led by Malian Minister Abdoulaye Maiga, and its aim is to show the solidarity of the two countries with the sister nation of Niger, just after the expiry on Sunday at midnight of the ultimatum issued by the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, to the Nigerian soldiers to restore ousted President Mohamed Basum. ECOWAS had threatened to use force after the deadline expired. Mali and Burkina Faso, where military forces also seized power by force in 2020 and 2022, had warned in a joint statement that they would consider such an intervention as a declaration of war. In Angola, local media reported that the former guerrilla group and second largest political party, UNIDA, is promoting violent anti-governmental protests and demanding the resignation of the president, Joao Lorenzo. Adalberto Costa Jr., the current leader of UNIDA on Sunday, organized a demonstration to mark a new anniversary of the assassination of the founder of the organization, which occurred in 2002. According to the Angolan authorities, the rally turned into a violent act of anti-government protest. Test. The police forces intervened and several people were injured and others were detained. Costa Jr. was defeated in the last elections by Lorenzo and with the support of some Western countries is promoting acts of destabilization in the country. On Monday, Cambodia's king appointed Hun Manet as the new prime minister, following the past from his father Hun Sen, who ruled the country for nearly four decades. Just days after his landslide victory in the July election, Hun Sen, one of the world's longest-serving leaders, announced he was stepping down as prime minister 
and handing over power to his eldest son. The polls was widely criticized as the sham after the opposition party was barred from running on a technicality while the ruling Cambodia People's Party, the CPP, obtained just five seats in the 125-member lower house. The new prime minister and his cabinet have yet to win a vote of confidence in the legislature on August 22nd, although he insists he will not interfere with his 45-year-old son's rule, Hun Sen has also promised Cambodians that he will continue to dominate the country's politics. On Monday, some 200 bakers in Tunisia take part in a sit-in outside the headquarters of the Ministry of Commerce to protest the closure of more than 1,500 of their bakeries following the government's decision to cut off the supply of the subsidized flour. Tunisia has been suffering from a bread shortage for months, causing long lines outside bakeries. In December, thousands of bakeries closed their doors as part of a general strike to demand that the government pay their dues in this context of subsides to the bakery industry. The current administration had published a plan to begin phasing out bread subsides over a four-year period. Tunisia is going through a deep financial crisis that has led to frequent shortages of basic commodities, such as sugar, milk and rice, coinciding with an accelerating inflation rate of 9.8 percent, according to official figures released in early December. I came here today because we have no income. 1,500 bakeries are closed and their owners are risking going to prison as they are no longer able to pay their rents and leasing debts. 1,500 bakeries employing six to seven workers each. All of them are now jobless and homeless. And we have come to the end of this news brief. But remember, if you want to, you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net. And also, if you feel so inclined, please join us on social media for all the latest news. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok. For Telesur English, I'm Jorenko Gladys Quesada. Thank you for watching.